Okay, now we're going to do some of these graphing um, functions. So we're, we're going to graph the inverse function along with the one-to-one -one function. Um, so let's see here. We're going to do number, mm, I don't know, start with 36. Okay, so if you're supposed to graph the inverse function, one thing that you want to remember is the following. First off, uh, with a function and its inverse, um, you know, since we already know that uh, the function is a function, we know that you know it's one to one as well. Therefore, it has an inverse over the entirety of its domain. And the following will be true: if you have some uh, coordinate in the original function, like x, y, to find that exact same coordinate in the inverse, all you need to do is just reverse the two numbers. So it's a real easy way to to graph it out. Uh, this this comes from the idea that uh, an inverse this and uh, I'm sorry a function and also its inverse are going to be uh, reflected over the line y equals x so it's reflected over the line y equals x what this says is that the x and the y values basically switch so that's the whole idea behind um, how to graph it out real easily so check it out uh, for number 36 if I've got one coordinate negative 3 3 on, on the function then that means for the inverse I'm going to reverse it so it'll be 3, negative 3, and I graph that coordinate, so I go over 3, 1, 2, 3, and then down 3, 1, 2, 3. There's the same coordinate reflected over the y-axis, or I'm sorry, not y, y-axis, but over the line y equals x. All right, I've got another coordinate, 3, 1, so if I switch it around, I get 1, comma 3, and that's my other coordinate, so go over 1, up 3, 1, 2, 3, and then just draw a line between those two points, and you've got your inverse function. Pretty easy, right? Uh, let's do another one. Um, so let's see here. We're supposed to do number 40 for the homework. Uh, so I don't know. I'll do hmm, number, I guess let's do 41, whatever. Okay. So for number 41 here, um, if it's reflecting, well, if it, if it changes the x and the y values, the origin stays the same, you know, because if I switch 0, 0 to 0, 0, it, it doesn't change it at all. And I've got another coordinate over here at 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this coordinate's at 4, 4. So again, um, if I reverse the order on that, 4, 4, it still ends up at 4, 4. So the only difference is that the graph is going to be reflecting over the line y equals x. So if I draw my line straight down there, it's just going to reflect over that line. So it'll look kind of like this. I graph it out. So, you know, just set up two initial points you know, from, uh, refle from reversing the order of them, and then just kind of drew the pattern, uh, reflected over the line y equals x. That's how I got that inverse graph um, pretty easily. So yeah, just follow that pattern, and it makes it pretty easy, especially if you have a linear equation like what we saw in number 36. All right, that's it for these ones. Um, let's see. I'll probably do some of those, like, inverse problems from 43 to 60, and that'll be it.